All right, students, we talked about some logarithms, and I know that even it hasn't been just last week, but early part of last week, and we talked about how those are really just inverses of exponentials. Okay, here's what I mean. On uh, a previous class, we really harped on getting this idea down right here, right? If it was the base and the exponential, it's the base and the logarithm. If it's the exponent in the exponent, it's the answer in the logarithm. If it's the answer in the exponential, we call it the argument of the log. We're going to continue to reinforce that idea today. Um, there are going to be two different ways that you could do this. Okay? And here's what I mean. If this idea right here of switching back and forth makes a lot of sense to you, we will do that and you can use that method to complete this process, right? The first step is just going to be rewrite in log form or in exponential form, okay? If problems like 7e where you take x and y switch them and solve for y if that makes more sense that's going to be this idea right here they both are going to get you the same answer okay they both are going to get you the same answer but what we're going to do is take these log these logs and we're just going to graph them okay so right here Let's do this based on the, uh, we'll do this problem right here a couple different ways. Would you help me out, Charlie? Go ahead and uh, hit the lights for me, please. I'm going to turn the lights out. Hopefully this stays here. Come on. Nope. Nope, you'll leave them, leave them on. Use your phone as a flashlight. You use your phone as a flashlight. See if this works a little bit more. <laughs> oh, see? All right. Right here, students. When we're looking at this, okay, I'm going to do this first example two different ways. The first way I'm going to do it is using what I've uh, typed here in the directions. The next way I'm going to do it is what I'm going to write here in the red just below. And I'll do that again down here. You can decide which way is your preferred method. It doesn't really matter. I'll show you that eventually we're going to come up with the same answer. All right, students, right here. Let's do the typed way first. Here is the expectation. You are to graph this. Now, before we get started, Anytime I saw, and that was this is before Algebra 2, anytime I saw an equation that just had x to the first power, you knew it was a line. Okay? Excuse me. In first semester of Algebra 2, what shape was your graph every time you saw the x inside the absolute value sign? What shape was it? V's for absolute value, right? What about anytime you saw x squared, what shape was it? Parabolabolas, right? The old U's, parabola. We have briefly talked about exponentials, okay? Even on a, a learning check, you may have seen and recall what the basic shape was. Here is just the idea from that. It kind of starts low, either on the left or the right, and it goes up forever. These logarithms... They all have similar shape. The logarithm is a parent function of this. Okay, so let's be mindful that all of these are going to have a similar shape to each other. This first one, it says y equals log base 3 of x. I have to determine what the inverse exponential is. And that's what this is right here. Thanks, sir. That's what this is right here. Y equals 3 raised to the X. 
Notice the similarities. The Y is there, the 3, and the X. That's how I know it's 3 raised to the X is because it's log base 3. Now, students, we are not very familiar with actually doing this just yet. Okay, in time, my hope is that we are. But what I want to do is create points using this idea right here. So students, I have this function. And all I want to do is create some points. What are some numbers I could plug in? What would be some good numbers that I could use to plug in here? Anytime we're really trying to discover the shape of something, I'd always recommend starting at least with these five numbers. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's start out with maybe one of the easier ones. What is 3 raised to the 0th power? Owen? 1. Try it in your calculator, students. 3 raised to the 0th power. Every single time you put a number to the 0th power, your answer is always 1. Okay? What about 3 to the 1st? 3 squared. What about 3 to the negative first? What do negative exponents do again? They take it and what? Do they make the answer negative or do they do something else? They send it to the bottom of the fraction, right? So if to the positive 1 is 3, to the negative 1 is a third. If 3 squared is 9 or 3 to the negative seven. second is 1 ninth. I appreciate, I appreciate the effort. <coughs> Students, if I know that these are inverses of each other, what would the graph or what would the points look like if I have these then? If this one is 0 comma 1, Melissa, what would the order for these be? Uh, one, comma one comma zero, right? We're, are we not just switching the order for inverses? If it was negative one comma a third, then it's a third comma negative one. Now, students, I only want to graph one of these t-charts. Which is the only one, Sydney, the one on the left or the one on the right that is talking about the log base 3 of x? The one on the right is the only one that's talking about log base 3 of x. These are the only points, students, that I want to graph. <coughs> now I graph them here. Notice it's negative one ninth comma negative two. One third comma negative one. One comma zero. Three comma one and nine comma two. This right here is the general shape of a logarithmic function. It has a point at one comma zero, three comma one, 9 comma 2. There are obviously other points here. Remember uh, exponential functions? They have horizontal asymptotes. Does this look like it levels out horizontally speaking at all? No. It doesn't, right? So these logarithmic functions do not have horizontal asymptotes. Okay? Here is the other way to take a look at this problem, students. What I could do, and I'll rewrite the problem here, it said y equals log base 3 of x. And what I'm going to do is follow the red directions right here. 
The first one says rewrite it in exponential form. So I have a y, I have a 3, and I have an x. Joey, pick one of those, a y, 3, or x, and tell me which box it would go into. You got it. Old big box three. That's what we calls it. You're right. The three is the base of the log. And so I know the base of the log is always the base of the exponent. Alex, I have two things left. I have a Y and an X. Which one would go where? X would go which one, sorry? Yep, X would be the one that is the answer. That's exactly right. And that leaves Y as the exponent. Okay? Great. Now, students, let me ask you this question here. Think about your entire math career. When you graph something, what letter is typically by itself? X or Y? It's always been Y, right? But students, look at this problem. See how we're going to have to graph this equation right here? Y is not the one that's by itself. X is. So, what I would ask you to think about is which column should I plug numbers in for? If X is by itself, Kaylee, should I plug numbers in the X column or the Y column? Well, if I plug numbers in for X, am I just going to be able to use the calculator to simplify that? No. I'm going to, Owen, I'm going to plug it into the Y column and notice, see how that looks exactly what we have up here as the T chart? Right here? Because X is by itself. The reason I've always, in previous years or previous problems, plug numbers in for X is because Y has been by itself. Students, let's look at this. 3 raised to the 0th power. 1. 3 raised to the 1st. 3 raised to the 2nd. 3 raised to the negative 1st. And 3 raised to the negative 2nd. Students, did I not basically just create the same t-chart right here? Charlie Ann, do you see any differences with these two tables right here? No. I just went about it a different way. You have the choice, students, to do it whichever way makes more sense to you. If you like creating the double t-chart, perfect. Do it. If you just want to rewrite it in exponential form, then graph it, do it. All right, but notice if I graph it, it's going to be the exactly the same here. Now, before we go on any further, let's uh, take a couple things here. What do you think the domain and range would be for this? Let's start with the domain. The domain starts on the left and goes to the right. What's the first number that the graph actually touches as I go from left to right? first number? Wouldn't it be zero? Doesn't the graph keep getting closer and closer, excuse me, to zero right here? I don't know, that looks like it's a negative one ninth. It's not what I'm intending to make it. So the domain here is going to be zero. How far does the graph go to the right? Forever, right? And in fact, it goes there pretty fast. What about the range? Does the range, how far does the graph go down forever? Looks like that's where it goes, right? There's not a starting value. Negative to positive infinity. And the last thing, we said that there were no horizontal asymptotes, but there are vertical asymptotes. Aiden, vertical asymptotes are what? X equals or Y equals? Uh, 
Vertical asymptotes are always x equals. How do we find that number? Well, whatever the same number is for the domain right there. Just like that matched up with the range. So students, this is what it is for the log, which makes sense because this one right here didn't it have a domain of negative to positive infinity? And didn't it have a range of zero to infinity? And didn't it have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero? Students, doesn't that match up if we switch the x and y with the inverse right there? So that's why this makes sense. Because, again, I just switched the order of the other points. All right, so please keep in mind that this might be some information that we're looking at here. If there, it's always negative to positive infinity for the range, okay, just like the domain is for exponentials. All right, students, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment here, and we're going to go on to the next page, and I want you to give this a try, please. Take a look at uh, what is the next one. It's at the top here. Remember, there's a couple different ways to do this. You could either write the inverse, or what you could do is rewrite it in exponential form. Feel free to flip back and forth with these. I'm actually going to leave it. I'm going to flip back one page here and flip it so you can see this as an example if needed. Go ahead, open up to that page. I'm coming around to look at it. I want to know what method that you're trying. It really doesn't matter, right? Is what page one? Just like the parent function is always going to start at zero, it might get shifted a little bit. Okay. We can talk about that, okay?
actually prefer what I have written in the red ink. That's just my preferred method, but that doesn't make it wrong. Um, when I, uh, I don't remember doing this in high school. So I remember when I started teaching algebra 2, you know, 10, whatever years ago, probably more than that now. I like taught myself how to do it, and then this is how I taught myself how to do it, was using these boxes here, right? So 2 raised to the y equals x. That's automatically going to get me to these numbers right here, which means it's 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, and 4. But again, if you think about it this way, that's what this graph can also help you do. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, 4, 2, 1, a half, and a fourth. Now I can just graph it. Again, either way you do it, I'm only graphing this T-chart right here. Okay? So, uh, right here, right here, and here, and here. If you keep going, would you not agree there would be a point at 8, 3? That's not very clear. 8, 3 is what I'm trying to write there. If I kept this table going, right, that's 4, 2, 2, 1, and so on. Which one of these is always negative to positive infinity? The range, right? Negative to positive infinity for the range. The domain, it's always going to extend forever there to the right. But what number is it starting at? It doesn't look like it is in the negative, so it has to be at zero, right? Which means we now know our vertical asymptote, x equals zero. Now students, this next thing is the same way. We could do it the same way here. When we have this, we are going to throw in some transformations. Here are the only kind of transformations that we're going to do. We're just going to shift it either right or left or up and down. Those are the only two types of transformations. No reflections here. No stretch, no compression. Okay. We're just trying to basically take the original graph and we're going to shift it around. So you don't have to use all the T-charts because case in point, you may not have used all the T-charts from above. But let's take a look at this here. When we talk about a certain problem and there are some numbers added or subtracted, we'll come back to that here. 
this right here is what I'm going to start with in graphing. See how I ignored all of the numbers that were added or subtracted? That's what I'm going to start with. And from there, maybe you would write the inverse or maybe you would rewrite it in exponential form. Choose one of those methods here. Go ahead and do that. Find your table. Find your t-chart, however you do that. Some of you say y equals 4 raised to the x. Others of you say 4 raised to the y value equals x. Y equals, sorry. Either way, you're going to come up with this table right here. What's the answer for the zero? Always. One. What's the answer always for the one? Isn't it always the base, whatever we have, right? And then what's the answer always for the negative one? Isn't it one on top with the base on the bottom? So maybe that's a quick way to do that, right? Come on, you blurriness, you. There we go. That means it's 1 over 16 and 16. Now, students, when I'm doing this here, I'm going to graph these five points, but I'm just going to do it in pencil for a really distinct reason here. Let me show you why I'm going to do that in just a second. This point is 16, 2, 4, 1, 1, 0, and so on, right? So there is those five points. Now, let's go back here to some of these numbers. Think about this. We have, like, probably just really exhausted this thing. Transformations. Look at these transformations right here. What direction and how many? Melissa, I have a minus 3. I have a positive 2. Pick one of those and tell me how many and which direction. Absolutely. Students, we're still doing the same idea. Opposite of the inside. So this is right 3. Julia, what about the plus 2 on the outside? Up 2. Just up 2, right? Up 2. I'm going to take each one of these 5 points, whether they're in the table or on the graph, and I'm going to move it right 3 then up two. Now I do admit it is probably a little bit harder without the boxes here to do that. But students, right here it is. One comma zero. One, two, three. Hold on a second. One, two, three. And then up two. One, two. 
this new point is now 4 comma 2. Isn't that make sense if I went right 3 and up 2? Isn't that how I get to that right there? What if I take 4 comma 1? What if I take 4 comma 1? If I move it right 3 and up 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 2, 7, comma 3. Couldn't I do that for all five points, right? 16, comma 2, 19, comma 5. Again, we could do it here. It was 1 fourth, comma negative 1. It's 3 and a fourth, comma positive 1. 1 sixteenth, comma negative 2. 3 and a sixteenth, comma 0. Isn't this right here now just the new graph right there? That's what we're looking for right there. Students, I'm only going to answer these questions for my shifted graph. GF for you, which one was always the easiest one to answer? Domain, range, or vertical asymptote? Okay, what's the domain here? The purple one, yes, the shifted graph right here. Oh, not at zero, not anymore. It was zero, but now I added some shifts into it, right? So how many did I go right or left? So it's at 3, comma, infinity, right there. The reason it's not 3, comma, 1 16th is if I, let's see, what can I do here? If I had a negative 3, that would be 1 over 64, right? See how I could, and then if I shifted it, it would be 3 and 1 64th, comma, negative 1. Right, so I could actually keep getting closer and closer to three here for that. How did we know it was the domain? Well, because look at this number right here. It says right three. We know right means positive direction. So that number matches with the domain. Will? Well, it starts at zero, but notice the shift changes it. Yeah. After the shift, it might not be zero. Yeah, okay. Just like with the exponentials. The range always started with zero, but the asymptote, the number subtracted at the very end, either shifted up or down to affect it from there. Kevin, which one's the easiest for you that is left, range or vertical asymptote? Yeah, the range has always been what for every single problem? Not zero. And then where does it stop? Always. The range is that right there. Vertical asymptote, we know it's x equals. x equals what number? Isn't it have to be the same number as my shift either right or left there? So in this case, it's just being shifted right three, my vertical asymptote. This line here is technically not there, but it's a boundary line, right? That the graph is never going to touch. It's going to get closer and closer to it. Let's do one more here. The last one, we'll finish it up right there. Go ahead, choose your method, whether it's the uh, inverse, the parent function as y equals log base 2 of x. Go ahead and either find the inverse or 